What year did you start your organ procurement journey? Uh, 1968, up in Minnesota. Do you remember your first patient? I think it was a six-year-old child, drowning victim in Duluth, Minnesota. And it was winter time. And we had to, try, we tried to fly up to Duluth, but we couldn't because of weather, so we had to drive to Duluth to do the procedure. So I, I think that was my first. Wow. And how many patients total have you worked on? Uh, between five and 7,000. On average, how many organs are donated every year? About 14,000 organ donors in the United States. And how many more organs do you need each year to help everyone? Well, the last time I looked at the list, the size of the list, there was 144,000 people waiting. Of that 144,000, half were kidney patients. And dialysis can keep a person alive for long periods of time um, to get a transplant. Mm -hmm. Patients waiting for lung, heart, liver, uh, when they go critical, they go fast. So you either have to get them transplanted or they die on the list. Mm -hmm. So the list stays pretty stable. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, we need more help. Which is the most difficult organ to retrieve? It's the pancreas. The pancreas is a delicate organ and it produces insulin and uh, enzymes for di digestion. And it, it's um, a, a tender organ. In fact, they tell surgical residents the first day is don't mess with the pancreas. Because if you throw that pancreas into pancreatitis, mm -hmm. it could kill the patient. Oh my God. Okay? So uh, we now have to remove the whole thing out for the, transplanting the recipient. Mm -hmm. So we have to handle it much more than uh, you usually would. Um, but it's very successful. So if the pancreas is the most difficult organ to retrieve, what's the easiest? The heart is the easiest. And that's because the vessels are very large and it's the easy to, to sew in. So how many people does it take for the organ to be retrieved and then placed into a new recipient? It takes about 20 to 30 professionals mm -hmm. to do the whole process. That's the donor operation the donor preservation before harvest, um, talking to family members, getting permission from the medical examiner, uh, all those details have to be do, done before we can take the patient to the operating room. Interesting. And what is the typical life expectancy for the patients with a new organ? Uh, that depends on which organ. Oh. For a kidney, it, chances are 93% uh, that you'll still have a functioning kidney mm -hmm. at one year. Okay. okay. Liver runs about 55%. Okay. And, and the other organs in between. And how do you know if the organ is going to match with its intended recipient? You take uh, tissue typing. And tissue typing is finding the antigens or proteins mm -hmm. that are on the cell wall surface. And they're just like your knuckles. Okay. So if you if you match these up between a donor and recipient, it's less likely that you're going to have immune response against the, the kidney. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's very interesting, the whole process of getting matched. What scientific breakthrough would push an organ procurement into having no one left on the list? Organ preservation would be a big item. We lose too many organs because we don't have the preservation time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's tragic right there in itself. Um, having other ways of dealing with still the rejection problems. Uh, our drugs now are quantum leap over what we were using years ago. And it's so good that uh, you're pretty much assured of successful transplant. Um, there's still hurdles, there's still some problems. A few patients who have to deal with rejection, but it's nothing like it used to be. So how long does a typical organ last after someone is deceased? Um, the, it's also dependent on the, the organ. Mm -hmm. um, heart, you need to have right away. That has to be um, within minutes of, of death. Minutes, yeah, yeah. okay. 
Um, if it's a brain dead case, then that you can extend that out a time period. For how long? For, oh, as long as the heart is usable in the donor. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they do all the mechanics in the background to get the organ transplanted. By the time you recover the, the organ, then you can immediately transplant it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Livers are good for 18 hours, okay. but ideally you want them in a recipient within 12 hours. Within 12 hours. Yeah, that gives the best results. Okay. Um, uh, kidneys can go three days okay. on ice. Okay. Now, when you do a lot of ice preservation, there will be what's called delayed graft function which the kidney is transplanted and it doesn't work right away. Mm -hmm. And it may be two or three days before it starts working. And is that how they preserve the organs on ice? Yeah, you can machine perfuse organs mm -hmm. or you can put them on ice, okay? Machine preservation of organs is better, but it's more difficult to transport. Why? The size, okay. who, where you, you generally end up sending uh, kidneys on a machine in, in uh, charter jets, which gets to be quite expensive, you know. Um, but they can have kidneys in one place on the machine, take it off the machine, put it in ice, get it to the recipient center, and they will put it back on the machine, and then that extends the life of the, of the kidney. Is it a special kind of cooler or like a lunchbox? Um, a play box, a play plan. Playpen? Yeah, they, the, um, they, that's when you send it on ice, okay? It's just, it's just styrofoam or sometimes a plastic container, mostly styrofoam boxes that you can store organs in and ship them in that. What is the most difficult aspect of organ procurement? Donor families and the, the pain that they are having, that they're demonstrating, um, the crying, the absolute uh, um, sad situation that they're in, and and there's nothing they can do about it, and uh, it, it's just horrible for them. So if you could go into the family and work with them and give them um, the option of organ donation, and they then will focus on the benefit of the death, and not just the death. And that helps them tremendously. Okay? Recipients also have extended families and everybody knows about it and they, that type of thing. Uh, but the donor family has, the, the, these families that donate organs are the best people in the world. Mm -hmm. They are just so precious. It's hard, it's hard to sit and watch them grieve Mm -hmm. and uh, just trying to establish a rapport mm -hmm. on them so they could understand what you're talking about uh, when we bring them the options of organ donation. And um, uh, it, it's, um, that, that's hard. It takes a special person to be able to go and talk to donor families. Is it easier for the family to cope if the donor already checked off the box to donate oh, the organ? That is so good. I mean... Uh, that takes the, the pressure off the family as to what the patient would want to do, okay? So having that donor card is, is gold, mm -hmm. okay? Very, very few p p uh, families will go against donation if the patient has a donor card. And the donor card is where exactly? It's on your driver's license. Okay. okay? So um, uh, obviously for small children, you have to have the parent's consent. Okay. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the, these these families that go through such grief and come out um, in a better place okay. if they donate the organs. What happens to the organs if they fail or the recipient does not accept the organs? Well, very few recipients reject the organ. Oh. They they want. They're waiting. They're mm -hmm. on the list. They're. They're waiting for that call, that life-saving call they're waiting for. And one of the problems we have is that we'll have a recipient who wants the organ so badly, they'll come in 
and the opera you know, to the uh, hospital mm -hmm. to be admitted, right. and he's got a high white count. He's got a fever. Mm -hmm. He's got other infections going on, right. and he can't be transplanted. Okay. So now we have to look for another recipient mm -hmm. to come in to receive the organ. Okay. So uh, um, they're desperate to get the organ. Right. So they'll go and they'll say that well, I feel just fine when indeed they don't. So if they have something going on that prevents them from having the transplant, are they next in line to get the next organ? No, there is no line for organs. A donor uh, properties are fed into a computer mm -hmm. and they measure the recipient properties and the donor properties and like tissue typing, blood grouping, all that, um, before they're actually selected to be on the on the list, and they list them patient one through ten. So on one donor, you may be patient three. Mm -hmm. The next donor, you may be patient eighty-seven. Wow. Okay. Right. So there is no one, two, three type of thing. So it's according to tissue type. It's according to tissue typing and preservation, matching, and how long they've been on the list. So how does your book? give us insight into this rather unknown world of organ procurement? Yeah. Well, the, I designed the book to educate the people on brain death, organ donation, transplantation, everything that's in the book is actual. Okay? The fiction of the book is the story, the crime mm -hmm. thriller that's part of the book. Mm -hmm. So people to read read the crime filler, I don't get educated on what the process is like. So that is the whole object of the book. That's fabulous. In your book, there's a look into the world of the underground organ black market trade. Did you ever have a run-in with the black market? Uh, no. No. No, no. I, there's not a good way to get organs into the system except for my book. The way I wrote the book uh -huh. is that things could actually happen. Right. It's not like having thunderbolts come out of your eyes and destroy worlds or something. This this could actually happen. Mm -hmm. It may have happened. Right. Okay. So uh, um, that's that's a idea of getting people into the book. Got it. So in your book, you have a love plot. Is that based on a real event? Um, uh, yes and no. Okay. okay um, that's kind of a draw also for the book. Right. Is the, the, um, the plot of romance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a message that you want to be heard to the public utilizing your story? The message I want is to say, yeah, we're, more people are signing donor codes. Or if you don't want to sign a donor code, just talk to your family mm -hmm. and say, if something happens, I would like to be a donor, mm -hmm. okay? Because they'll give permission if they're prompted about that. What made you write a story about organ procurement? Uh, I wanted to write a story to educate the public on the process mm -hmm. of transplantation. You've been in the industry for 55 years. What has it taught you? It taught me that uh, people are wonderful. To have these families who are in the middle of grief and say, yeah, we want donation, tells you that these are really good people. And uh, the love that they show, and it, it's to the staff and everything about the process, as we go through the process, it's just phenomenal. And you just, you know, you leave the hospital, just think, wow, this is such a neat thing. You know, because the family only, you know, so this is an altruistic gift. You can't pay for it, right. okay? So it's the only truly altruistic gift we have in society. It's something that um, people will receive after the donation because they'll know that, yes, they've lost their young one or the little one or the baby, the, the adult, but somebody else is living normal because they were here on this planet. Right. Okay? And that gives a lot of um, a message of caring mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to the to the families. 